Hey guys, so today I wanted to take you on a little tour of our homeschool closet. And I was going to explain some stuff, but I thought I'd just jump right in because I have a feeling this is gonna take a while. So I'll start down here by saying that this is our dress up box. It does come out and basically get emptied all over the floor of this whole room pretty much every single day. So it's kind of the bane of my existence. On the next shelf up, I have a stack of paper and there's a couple of papers of different colors here. There are actually some papers that have, you know, worksheets and things like that on them in case the kids feel like doing a worksheet, you can kind of see that there. I actually keep the really exciting colors up here. And the reason I do that is because I'll find that the kids will do something like try and take a blue one out of the bottom and then I have a thousand pieces of paper lying on the floor in front of the closet and so I actually usually do make the kids ask if they want one of these papers or one of the big papers which you see here but down here is where we just have like basic every day want to use some paper and there's some construction paper and there's some displaced games because I only sort out this closet probably like once every two weeks and so it does end up getting messy also on this shelf I have the largest piece of play-doh that we own it makes me kind of crazy the play-doh and so I also do keep that up high because I don't like for the kids to make a mess with it all the time, so it's one of the toys I like them to have to ask for. And the last thing on this shelf is our wooden puzzles. Most of them, as you can see, are Melissa and Doug puzzles. And then we also have a couple of, I think they're called green toys. I'm not 100% sure. I have here the most recent puzzle that we got. It is a puzzle of a frog's life cycle, so it's actually got many layers to it, and the kids have been really enjoying that because as you pull the layers off, you can see the frog getting smaller and smaller until he's a tad pole and then you can put them back together and so it's been a really cool way of playing while learning about the life cycle of a frog. I think lastly we have here a census puzzle. This we got from a preschool when they closed down so that was kind of a neat find. So also at the bottom of the closet you will see that we have two of these Ikea Rascog carts. One of them is our most used art supplies cart and one of them is our most used games and school supplies cart and so I will give you a really quick rundown of both of those. I also do switch out the things on this cart quite often and so it's not always the same. I guess I will do the art one first. So on the art cart, we have two cups of markers, which are kind of our more used up markers. These are the ones that Lily's allowed to go through and play with whenever she wants. I have a brand new pack of thin tip markers because James uses those to write and a brand new pack of James and Joe's that Lily is not allowed to use in here. There's also, you know, tape and glue and scissors and a couple of stickers and things like that in this bin. Some envelopes because the kids really like writing letters to their friends lately. A tub of crayons and these are our paint brushes. And then these here, which are empty. Oh no, there's some in there. These are our dry erase markers because on the other side of the room, we have a dry erase board. On the next shelf down in this cart, we have some beads for making bracelets and things like that. We also have this silly thing which is floating around on every shelf. We also have those beads that you iron, which I've never been a huge fan of because I find them to be really wasteful, but the kids really, really enjoy them and honestly probably only use them about once a month. Over here we have a stamp pad and a whole bunch of letter stamps. I think letter stamps are a really, really cool way of getting kids to explore writing and sounding things out and stuff like that before they are really comfortable and confident in writing. I find that sometimes like writing can be really daunting and so by getting them letter stamps, they can kind of explore different sounds and things like that without ever having to actually commit to writing them. Underneath we have a whole bunch of different stamps. These are just the kids, they're just like Paw Patrol stamps. And oh, that's one of my favorites, it's a whale stamp. This is part of the Skin of Marinky Dink song. <laughs> And then here we have some paint trays because on the bottom we have a whole bunch of different acrylic paints we probably paint almost every day. So that is our art cart. This is the other cart that I take out every day. It's kind of usually filled with our most used stuff and so I do switch it out quite often. On the bottom, as you can see, we have a bunch of different games. IC10 by Learning Resources is an amazing, amazing math game and it doesn't feel like math when you're playing it. It just feels like a really fun game. It's a really great way for kids to solidify their knowledge in things that add up to 10. I just have some numbers flashcards here for Lily. This is Popular Playthings magnetic rod puzzle. Basically you just have these little magnets and you stack them up on this 
rod and you need to learn about polarity and stuff like that in order to get the pattern the right way. Um, these are both learning resources games as well. There is Pop for Addition and Subtraction and Pop for Word Families. This one is kind of cool because it has little word endings on it and then the kids get to make up words that come with that ending and so that's kind of neat and we've been using that for a couple years now. Color Cubed is a really cool game because you can play it basically, I mean it says 5 plus on there. Lily will play the game with us though she won't get a lot of points. It's kind of good for any age except there's a lot of strategy involved if you do play with older kids so that is a really fun game. Here I just have a kitchen scale because the kids really like weighing things. I have a bag of just learning resources bears. And here I have another thing that I got from the preschool when they closed down. It's just a set of money dominoes. So this is a great way to solidify knowledge in math while, you know, playing with something that is a game that also has to do with money, which James is obsessed with. On the next shelf up, everything is in bags, so this is going to be a pain. Um, but this is the Melissa and Doug See and Spell. Uh, I've had it since James was a baby, and all three of my kids have gotten a lot of use out of this toy. This is definitely one of my most recommended toys in the house when it comes to learning the alphabet and learning alphabet sounds and just playing. In this bag, there are a whole bunch of magnetic numbers, and these go with our number boards, which are actually on the top shelf here. Um, number boards can be quite expensive. I think these ones were $40 each, but there's something I definitely definitely recommend to every family that is teaching their kids numbers from 1 to 100. There are so many different things you can do with them, especially if you get a magnetic dry erase one. There's so many different games you can play and activities you can do, so yeah, definitely high up on my recommended list. These are um, learning resources, attribute apples. Really, really cool for sorting out, for learning about Venn diagrams, for playing, for all different kinds of things. We've had those for a couple of years and we really like those too. This is the game Rush Hour by Think Fun. We actually have the Rush Hour Junior game and we have two of the expansion packs because Joe really, really loves puzzle games and logic puzzles and this is a really excellent one. We do, you're gonna notice, have a huge amount of games by the company Think Fun and the company Smart Games and I definitely recommend both of those companies if you are looking for some really fun games. Um, this here is a bag of pattern blocks. We use those for sorting and for games that we make up and for, you know, just general playing and making patterns and I don't even know what's in this bag. Oh, these are our sand timers. So we just have a bunch of different sand timers and they all have different times on them. And sometimes we use them when we're playing games, but other times the kids use them to kind of compare the difference between times. So for instance, as you can see, there's 30 seconds and one minute there. So the kids will play games where they'll try and flip this one twice by the time that this one runs out. They're just a really cool little thing to add to your learning cart. And then lastly on this shelf, we have Cuisinaire rods, which are also an amazing, amazing toy for math knowledge. I actually have a lot of videos coming on my channel when it comes to these rods, and so you can look out for those, but an excellent addition, especially for homeschooling families. I'd probably say you could start using these with a child, honestly, before they're two years old even, and it's really, really excellent. You can use them to learn about math concepts pretty much until they graduate high school, I'd say. So yeah, an excellent thing to invest in if you guys are going to. All right, and then on the top shelf of our learning cart, we have a Alex Little Hands button game where you get a card and you put in all the different color buttons. Also a game that I've had for about six years now and all three of my kids have really, really loved it. Here I just have some um, dry erase centimeter boards for us to use with our Cuisinaire rods and our base 10 blocks. Here I showed you before, I have our magnetic hundreds boards. On one side there's a grid, on the other side there are all the numbers and they come with the magnets. Here I have a game by Smart Games, which is one of our favorite companies. This one's called Camelot Junior and it's probably Joe's favorite game in the whole house. We get a lot of use out of that one. This is just an abacus so that if the kids are playing some kind of math game or something like that, they can use it. I think I actually skipped an abacus somewhere on this cart because I'm sure that there's another one that's Lily's here. This is the most recent toy we've gotten. They are in the most recent video that I uploaded about unschooling. They are word building, reading rods, and we really, really love those. Here we have that other abacus I was talking about. I have a bunch of different smart games and think fun games here. We have a two-player think fun card game here. This one is by Educational Insights. It's called Canoodle. Um, it gives you different cards and then you have to fit the rest of the little pegs on the board the right way, so that's kind of cool. Um, this is Think Fun Frogs. It's one of the games the kids got for Christmas. It's kind of like that old bar game where you'd have to jump all the different pegs over until there's only one peg left on the board, except for instead of pegs, it's got tiny frogs. 
This is the Smart Games Butterfly Game. It is also one of Joe's favorite. It's one of those puzzles where you like slide everything around in order to make a picture. Smart Games Penguin Game. It is not as much of a favorite in our house, but it is still a really, really good logic game. Definitely a favorite in our house. It's the Smart Games Ghost Hunters games. The kids have done all the cards of this game probably like eight times over. The Smart Games Squirrel game, also a really, really cool game. Probably recommend it for kids a little older though. I would not say this is for anyone under the age of five. And then here we have some attribute sorting circles to go with our attribute apples, which I showed you before, and with our set of attribute blocks, which is right here at the top of the cart. And lastly here, I have a set of fractions towers. The kids do use these quite a lot to play with and also to figure things out when we're playing games like fractions bingo, which I've made you guys a video of. So that is our learning and games cart, which comes out every day. This shelf is for all of our board games and puzzles and some miscellaneous stuff. So I'm gonna try and quickly run through it because this video is getting very long. A dinosaur puzzle, a world map puzzle, a whole bunch of different endangered species puzzles, a T-Rex puzzle by Melissa and Doug, a couple other little puzzles by Melissa and Doug. And here, if you're gonna buy anything that comes to like puzzles in this closet, I would definitely recommend this one. It is the human anatomy puzzle and it has bones on one side and organs and systems on the other side. Especially if you are a nurse or anyone who knows anything about the skeletal system or the organs. This is an excellent puzzle to do with your kids because while you're putting it together, you can talk about all the different bones and all the different systems and like what each part of the body is. So that is one of our most used puzzles in the whole closet. We have got some board games and things like that here. Sorry, Battleship is a board game. This is called Top That, which is a board game about speed and a little bit about problem solving. Snakes and Ladders, this one is a knockoff called Shoot and ladders, Jenga, what do we have back there? This is just a set of magnets, Koala Capers, which is another board game, Cobra Paw, which is a really awesome board game, Harvest Time is a board game, Dino Math Tracks is one of our more recent board games and it is amazing, it's about place value and there's so many different ways to play and so many different levels of learning that you can do. Thumpin' Thing Doodles, it's kind of just a game for smashing and being loud. <laughs> Shelby Snack Shack, which is a learning resources game, excellent for learning how to count. The Lemonade Stand, which is a memory game. Monopoly, which you guys all know. The Sneaky Snacky Squirrel Game, which is an excellent game when it comes to color and stuff like that. And here we have Guess Who, which is a really cool game, but my kids are not quite understanding the concept of it, so it doesn't really get any play. An alphabet game here, it's kind of like an alphabet bingo game Lily really likes. And here we have a sight words bingo game, which we just got yesterday. The Snail's Pace Race by Ravensburger, which honestly makes me wanna shoot myself in the face. But the kids have really liked it since they were little. And we have two vocabulary bingo games. Whew, that was a mouthful. Other than games and puzzles on that shelf, there is another think fun problem solving game. There are a couple of different school games like learning to sequence, which is putting things in order, animal babies, which is a little puzzle of mummies and babies, relational geosolids, which is a set for learning about the difference between the different solids. So instead of, you know, like squares and circles, these are all different prisms and cubes and spheres and things like that. Mighty Mind, which you guys have probably heard of, it is a game with all kinds of little blocks and you get little cards and you have to fill them in with the little blocks. So we got that second hand a lot of years ago. Here we have some different weights to use with our balance, some letter magnets and some little shape magnets mixed in with them. I am not gonna open this up, but it is a set of four different anatomy models by Learning Resources. We put those together infrequently because there are a billion pieces. Underneath we have a light bright. I don't know why, Alex just bought it last week. On our next shelf, we have some pop beads, a whole bunch of different pattern scissors, James's collection of beach glass, I don't know why, some bingo dabbers. In here, I have some more of our things that get switched out quite frequently with our learning cart. So up at the top, I have all different kinds of flashcards and card games and things like that. I'm gonna need a chair. In the next drawer, I have all of our learning stamps. So I have pattern blocks, learning stamps. I have some multiplication boards and hundreds boards and blank hundreds boards. Tail side of all the Canadian coins so that we can do different activities with those. Um, some base 10 stamps here. 
a clock stamp that you can stamp and they can fill in both the digital and the analog side of the clock. So that's kind of cool. And a little stamp pad. This is our dice and small manipulatives drawer. So it's got a whole bunch of different dice in it. As you can see, we have pattern blocks dice and regular dice. And we have um, numeral dice in here. So it actually says the number instead of having little dots on it. For telling stories and things, they have different pictures on them. Place value dice for using with our base 10 set. We have some bananagrams. We have more dice here. Oh, these are tangrams in this little bag. So a whole bunch of different shapes and things like that. Uh, we have some tiddlywinks here and some fractions dice here. Underneath we have anglegs and some protractors. The kids have not gotten a lot of use out of those yet, so they are kind of buried in the bottom of the drawer. And what's in here? Dun -da -da, some dominoes. I think this drawer is empty. This one is full of miscellaneous things like paint stuff and pencils, geometry and math extras. So I have some learning wrap ups for addition and subtraction, a learning wrap up for fraction, school style stickers, Soroban, which is a Japanese abacus, some different rulers and a Judy clock where you turn one hand and the other hand moves kind of at the rate that it's supposed to, some protractors and a geo reflector for arts and also for geometry. Here I have a Lippmann stethoscope. Yeah, it's the classic too. It's just a stethoscope that I used to use when I was in nursing school, but the kids really, really love it. Like I said before, we have our Play-Doh and our paper and our big paper and our stickers. And finally we're on the top shelf, which <laughs> actually doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. These are our old workbooks. As you guys know, we stopped using workbooks about six or seven months ago. And I just have, you know, a couple of pages if the kids request them. Sometimes they ask for these, but it's very infrequently. And and across the room with the vacuum leaning on it, connect the dots and some simpler workbooks that they can just like do willy nilly, a flashcard holder. And so I put in the words that the kids have the most difficulty with when they're writing letters and stuff to their friends and a whole bunch of kids arts and crafts, our dry erase board, and a rock climbing wall. So in the top of the closet, we have this game, just a game for like sorting things out for little kids. Lily enjoys it, but we have so, so many games that kind of do the same thing. So um, that's why it's up here. There is a game called Scabs and Guts that James got for his birthday, which is just slightly too old for him. So it's up here just waiting for him to be able to play it. A couple of little arts and crafts things are up here and some sewing stuffing. <laughs> Box of pencil crayons. This is a Crayola air marker sprayer. So it's for doing airbrushing. Lily really, really loves that. I got a couple of books for the kids to write in. A little art set that James also got for, I think for Christmas he got this one. Up here we have all of our base 10 blocks, which are in a big basket because we have way too many of those. <laughs> Here we have a bead making set where you actually make beads out of paper. It like rolls them up and glue them, which is really, really cool. Um, this one just has yarn and string in it. In this box is um, some mahjong tiles because my mom's dad, uh, he was actually Chinese and he really liked mahjong. And so my mom plays it and that's just to encourage the kids to have some interest in it. We have an origami set up there. I don't know why it's like that. This is just a pencil sharpener, but it's automatic. And so I take it down if the boys are using the pencil crayons when Lily's sleeping, but I don't like to keep it down because if you put a finger in there, it will sharpen a finger. Up here, we also have our little kit of science stuff. So underneath here, we have a microscope, which the kids have been really, really loving lately. Um, there we have a skull, which we actually found when we were at walking one day, but the kids like to poke at it and inspect it and stuff like that. And then in this little bin, we have our microscope slides, a couple of pieces for our microscope, any little things that the kids bring home to look at under the microscope. I don't know what this is. Some geodes, a little insect's nest, so yeah. And then because there was no more room in the closet, over here above our TV, we actually have our number balance. I do want to put up a shelf in the other room, which you probably saw leaning up against the wall and this, and this is gonna go on it. This is just our um, beginner bucket balance. So we use that for weighing things and Lily uses it for water play. And then lastly, in the next room, cause we ran out of space in the other room, we have Lego on this shelf and on that shelf. We have a Meccano set. It's actually Meccano Junior, so it's all plastic instead of the metal set. We have a bucket of Magformers, including the um, Magformer set that has like electronic pieces with gears and stuff like that. So these are really, really cool for building and learning as well. So guys, I am totally out of breath now and I actually just realized there's one last thing I didn't show you. This is the Learning Resources Code and Go Robot Mouse. I don't know why I didn't mention it when I was showing you everything on this shelf. I'm sure I missed a couple of other things, but we'll see. 
anyways, that is our unschooling closet slash our pretty much every toy and puzzle and game that we have in the house. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them below, but I do use most of these things on our Instagram pretty much every day. And so if you want to, you can go and check out how we use all the different things on our Instagram. On top of that, I have, as you guys have seen, started a series of unschooling videos on our channel. And so I'm hoping to kind of run through every single toy in this closet and really, really fun ways to use it while learning at home. And so yeah, stay tuned if you wanna see all of those. And I hope that answers pretty much all of your questions. So I'll talk to you soon. I am going to go and have a drink and sit on the couch. <laughs> have a nice day guys, bye.